Welcome to another Good Life program. And really, if you're not having a good life, you can have a good life. I never right. say that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say it very often. But it's true in Jesus, isn't it? Amen. Today, we're having... Wow, what a program. Reynolds and Kathy Maines. And some of you will say, oh, I remember that name, Maines. Well, this is the offspring of David and Norma Jean. And we're just so thrilled to have them. They have what they call World Embrace Ministry. Now, how could you get more inclusive than that? World Embrace. Now, if we ever go on any other planet, they'll, they'll probably have to say that. But since we're not there, it's just the World Embrace. Yes. And Honey, we have so many videos and I'll tell you, this will bring so much joy to your heart to see these videos. This is going to be one exciting program, so you want to stay tuned to this. Amen. So right now, Tony LeBron is going to open the program with singing Jesus Messiah. The 
so good to have Kathy and Reynold with us today. Yes. And something has happened in their life that they are most excited about. Not most excited, but certainly excited. <laughs> Tell us what happened. Well, we've, we've joined your ranks and many other of your <laughs> viewers that are grandparents. Yay, we I'm are a recent grandma. grandparents. Yay. I'm married to a grandma and I love it. Thank you, honey. We have a beautiful you. baby. You can see there she is, just, oh. just born. Minutes oh. old. Yes, Ruby <laughs> Ann Lee was born September 3rd, 2015. So we are blessed beyond measure. Amen. Yes. Oh. We are grateful. Now your real love <laughs> is for the world, this world right here. Mm. And particularly, I never looked at Uganda. Yeah. But it's right Uganda, here. East Africa, yeah, right beside Kenya, below Sudan, yep. and to the right of Congo, and there's Rwanda and Tanzania, mm -hmm. right there. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where God's called us, and it's great to be back with you, folks. It's oh. so good to have uh, you back Last year we were with you, and we were able to share, and we really focused in on Heaven's Rehearsal. We yes. Did. <laughs> and that was just a huge, beautiful gathering of the body of Christ mm -hmm. that we were privileged to lead and have in the city of Toronto, which the United Nations says is the most multicultural mm -hmm. city in the world. Right. So kind of we were able to have a knothole view of Heaven, just a little peek of what <laughs> Heaven might look like in the worship of Heaven. Yes. And you know, uh, it's founded on scripture. We'd like to share a scripture right now uh, on, on the screen with you folks. And there it is, Revelation 7, 9. Ah, the great multitude in white robes. And the scripture reads, After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, every tribe, every people, every language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, they were wearing white robes and wearing palm branches in their hands. And that was written by John the Revelator when God yes. opened heaven to him. And, you know, that's our destiny for those that love God, for those that have received Jesus Christ as their Savior and made Jesus their Lord of their life. Our destiny is heaven. Amen. And God doesn't look at, uh, well, actually, the list, right? There's the list. Every nation, every tribe, every people, every language, and it doesn't say every denomination. <laughs> That's right. God looks past the denominational title and the sign out front of your church, and he looks at the hearts of everyone. He knows those who are his. Because when that book was written, yeah. there weren't any denominations. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so this is the focus, and, and if you will, we'd like to share with you a little glimpse into what happened at Heaven's Rehearsal. Yes, and I know it's going to be an encouragement to, to our <laughs> viewers. This is going to uplift you and bless you. And uh, again, it's a little glimpse of heaven, and I want to be there yes. oh, we in agree. heaven We've one day. We've seen it. Yeah. Oh, We've taken man. it with us to the mountains twice. Oh. <laughs> just about all we looked at. Yeah. It just brings the presence of God. So can we look at Heaven's Rehearsal yeah. now? Yes. Share a little glimpse with you. Here it is, Heaven's Rehearsal. Yeah, Lord, you are. seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true.
turning back. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. For you. A place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back. They sung it, they said it, we say it. <laughs> Hallelujah yes. to the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the only international word mm. that Hallelujah. means the same yeah. wow. wherever. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And Lord willing, and we know that the Lord is willing, the next Heavens rehearsal is going to be where we live now in Uganda. And so we're already preparing for that. Heavens rehearsal is one of the ministry activities of World Embrace. You know, so anyway, we're just so excited. And Lord willing, I keep saying that, we, we, we submit it all mm -hmm. to the Lord. The goal is to have representation of every tribe that is in the nation of Uganda. They are leading the worship, releasing the worship with the nations of the world coming and worshiping as well, wow. right? So it's just going to be a very strategic corporate gathering of the body of Christ. This isn't a concert. It's not supposed to be a one-time event, but it's a strategic corporate gathering of the nations, the generations, right? The, every nation, every tribe, every people, every language. And only the name of Jesus is lifted up. Yeah, it's a unique only gathering. Only the name. As you know, Bob and Jane, you've seen it. You've, you've right. watched the full oh, yeah. video. There's and let me, what was the atmosphere like? Oh my well, that's goodness. That's what I want you to convey to the people. Where, where, the where were you when that was going on? Well, Kathy and I, uh, God laid it on our heart to lead this, but God told us where to sit during Heaven's rehearsal, halfway up and halfway back. Every time we held it's it twice. It's not about a name. It wasn't about except us. Except His name. Again, there was no human's name mentioned during Heaven's rehearsal, even leading up to it. Some other promoters thought yeah, we were crazy wonderful. booking these huge venues. They said, man, you better have a big name if you're going to draw a big crowd or you're going to lose we your did, shirt. Jesus. You know? <laughs> we went with the name above every name. You're right. <laughs> the biggest name. So no human's name was mentioned. No organization was mentioned. There was no offering taken up. There was no product sale. No announcements. God impressed upon us at Heaven's rehearsal. Let it be the worship of Heaven. Worship and song wow. and dance and the word of the Lord. Just no Scripture preaching, was proclaimed. just the word of God declared. And that's mm. why we had people from all different denominations coming out to this. The Pentecostals, the Baptists, the Catholics, yeah. the Anglican, yeah. United Methodists, they were coming out because of the fact that we said, we put a call out to the nations. And again, we weren't calling denominations. Remember, it's every nation, tribe, people, and language. If you fit in there, every that's you. We put the Lord a call Jesus. out to the bride of Christ mm -hmm. to come. Your voice needs to be heard mm -hmm. for an audience of one. And we gathered, and it was wow. a beautiful gathering. And as Kathy said, the next one will be in Uganda. We haven't set the date yet. We're praying into the right time, yes. but uh, we're excited about that. Yes. It'll probably be this year. Oh, wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> Jehovah Jireh, Lord, Jehovah Jireh. You know, and it won't be just a three-hour gathering like it oh, was no. in these big venues in North America. The, the Ugandans said it has to be at least three days. Well, when people are walking 50 miles oh, yeah. or bicycling yeah. 100 miles to yeah. come to Heaven's Rehearsal, they don't want a three-hour gathering. No. It's going to be a three-day, it's going to be a Can beautiful gathering, tens of thousands. I'm Father, <laughs> Son, Holy Amen. Spirit. Yes. Amen. And you know, there, even though there was no altar call or no coming up to, to lay hands on the sick, do you know that there were people getting saved? There were people oh, getting healed. It. Why? Because God's blessing, His commanded blessing comes. 
when the body of Christ is one and only the name of, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And so supernatural things were yes. happening in the spirit because there was worship and unity and love, right? Yes. The power of love. So, so anyway. Bob and Jane, we're in Gulu, Uganda. That's where God has planted us. That's where Can we show you on a map? Right now. Can we show you on, yes. on a map where yes. we are? Okay, have a look right here. Of course, on the continent of Africa in the middle there, you can see kind of halfway down and towards the right, that little red area, that's Uganda. And on the right side, you can see where we are up at the north there, near southern Sudan. Where the red circle is. Uh, we're about 50 miles, I guess, from southern Sudan. And you can see Congo on our left and Kenya on the right. And down below us, uh, Rwanda and Tanzania. So we're blessed to be there. God has planted us there. And we believe that as World Embrace continues to be established there, um, that God is going to use that as a template mm. to, to show what happens when his church is one. Amen. Yeah. To see actually the commanded blessing of God. Amen. Psalm 133, where brothers dwell together in unity, there I command mm. my blessing, mm. God says. Yes. Wow. I mean, we're just believing for that. And as Kathy said, heaven's <clears throat> rehearsal will be there. And right now our focus is preparing the hearts of the leaders to understand and connect them. And later on, we're gonna show a miracle video. Are you ready for a miracle video? Stay tuned, because <laughs> at the end of the program, we're gonna show you a miracle video of what God's doing in the hearts and lives of these leaders from different denominations that looked at each other. They used to look at each other as enemies. Mm -hmm. Enemies. Man-made walls were high in Gulu and in Uganda. Tribalism and church tribalism. We have church tribalism here, by the way. Yeah. And oh, we have yes. man-made walls. <laughs> and we're just believing that God is creating a template and we're putting God's word to the test and believing and, and praying and sharing and speaking unity within the body of Christ. And God is gonna do it. Mm. We're excited. Now you're in Gulu. Yes. How far or are the... Um, what are we? The Muslims. Yeah. Uh, how far are they from you? North Africa is populated with Islam. Um, as, as you know, some people call it the 1040 window right across the world where there's a lot of unreached people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's in Sudan to the north of us. And uh, we're going to share a little bit later on how we believe God is going to push back and gain ground that has been taken. Through we're excited, unity. We're excited to share that yeah. uh, with you, the miracle of what unity causes in the spirit realm and in the physical realm. Mm -hmm. So yes. I want to answer that more thoroughly a little, little bit later, but you know, one of the, oh, Kathy and I have been in television for a long time. You mentioned my parents, David and Norma Jean <laughs> yes. Gaines. They were the founders of Christian television in Canada yes. some 54 years ago. And he's been on the program, and he loves you, Bob oh, and Jane. They love you. They You're a blessing love and an and encouragement greetings. to them. And, and, of course, they're in Florida half the year here, and they're watching you guys all the time. And you're yeah. such a wonderful ministry. Uh, but but uh, we're in Gulu, Uganda, and one of the first things I produce, because I'm a media person, a television person, been shooting, video, editing, producing. First thing I produced was a video on Gulu, Uganda, because we wanted to know, we wanted to let our family and friends know and supporters know where it is that God has planted us. Yeah. And so I've put together a video, and I'm, I'm on the back of something called a Bora Bora. Now, I know, Jane, you were wondering, well, what is a Bora Bora? <laughs> right? Yes. What it is, it's a small motorcycle that takes you from border to border. That's what they say. Border oh. to border, but so they call it Bora Bora. Bora. They don't oh, say the R, right. they go and, Bora Bora. And it is the taxi of Uganda. <laughs> Thousands of them, like in India, you know, there's motorcycles yeah. all over the place and little wee taxis. And so here it is to let you know where God has us planted, where most people still live in grass thatched huts in northern Uganda, but we're in a community of about 200,000. So here is Gulu from the back of a Bora Bora. Check it out. <laughs> I am here in Gulu, northern Uganda. Yeah, Gulu is northern Uganda. And I just met Stephen here. He's going to take me around and take us around for a little spin around Gulu. Okay, Stephen, let's go. We're now going.
to find out more about Reynold and Kathy Maines and to contact the World Embrace Ministry, please visit www.worldembrace.org. You can also follow World Embrace on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're here with Tony. 
Rental and Kathy Maines, and we're going to find out why Uganda. How did they get into this? <laughs> Go ahead and tell us. Well, Bob and Jane, it was in March of 2001 where God led us to get a globe similar to this on a stand, little globe, and during our family devotions with our three children, who were young at the time, after reading God's Word and in prayer, we would put the globe in the midst of us on a little coffee table, and we encouraged the kids to hug the globe, and we would hug our kids hugging the globe, and then we would put our hands just randomly on the globe with our little kids, and then uh, someone said, you need to pray that famous one-sentence prayer that Bob Pierce, founder of World Vision, prayed for many years of his life every day. And it was this, Father, may the things that break your heart break mine. Father, yeah. may the things that break your heart break mine. And I tell you, sometimes the kids would say, Father, may the things that break your heart break mine. Now can I go play? <laughs> yeah. And off they would go. But there were times when the Holy Spirit of God would just fall in our midst, our little family hugging the globe and saying, break our heart, God, with the things that break yours. And tears would be streaming down our faces. And that's when God led us to John chapter 17. And Jesus prayed for unity. And so the name World Embrace came out of hugging the globe, World Embrace. Mm. And the abbreviation for World Embrace is W-E, we. It's not us and them, you and me. It's all of us together, all followers of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Through the love that we have through him and, our, and out of the overflow and loving one another, let us embrace the world and see significant yeah. transformation yeah. and salvation. Mm -hmm. You know, Bob and Jane, we're encouraged in Scripture to pray every day to come to God in the Lord's Prayer, right? Give us this day our daily bread. We're to pray every day. We ask Jesus to answer our prayer mm. every day. And God wants that and invites that. And God wants to move in our lives. But every day we're calling out to God to answer our prayers. We believe World Embrace, the focus of World Embrace is to answer Jesus' prayer. Yes. That's good. John <laughs> 17, the longest recorded prayer of Jesus just hours before he was crucified, just hours. He had been with the disciples for three years. They had been with him day in and day out. Jesus knew he was dead tomorrow. He knew what was before him. Mm. He had them together for the Last Supper, and he prayed a prayer. First, he prayed for himself in John 17. Then he prayed for his disciples. Then he prayed for all of us that will believe because of the testimony of the disciples. We have the scripture we want to share with you because we really want you to read it as well. And take this to heart. This is Jesus praying for you and for me and all those that love Jesus. My prayer is not for them, the disciples alone. I also pray for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us. Listen to this closely now. So that the world may believe that you have sent me. Verse 22, I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I and them and you and me, so that, that they may be brought to complete unity. Here it is again. Then the world, the world, are you hearing that? That's talking here, the United States. That's talking Uganda. So then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Amen. 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 Now, Jesus wasn't being forgetful, yet he repeated himself three times. This is really important, and sometimes we wonder what Jesus is ever interceding at the right hand of the Father about. Well, a good indication might be what he was praying about when he left this earth. Yeah. Unity within the body of Christ is vitally important to Jesus. Yes. Vitally important, and Jesus tied it to evangelism. Mm -hmm. If we want to see revival, if we want to... If we want the world to know that God sent Jesus and that God loves them, we must be unified. We're doing a lot of efforts and we need to continue. Different denominations and churches are, are wanting to introduce Jesus and the love of Jesus and see people come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But if we really want, if we really want to see revival and the greatest impact, and if we really want the world to know God loves them and sent Jesus, 
we have to be one with another. We need to be unified yeah. because then His Spirit, the Spirit of God can flow through His church to reach the world. Amen. His yeah. church. God is not, Jesus is not going to, re, is returning for His churches. He's, he's returning yeah. for His church. Jesus is not returning for His brides. He's returning for His bride. We need to be one. We need okay. to be unified. So you're there now. And now it's just like God's favor is on everything. These divine connections, tell us about the favor mm -hmm. and the connections. Jane, you're so right. We are experiencing unprecedented favor. And I'll ask for the first picture and we'll just quickly describe what you're seeing on the screen. Here is uh, the leader in the north for the Anglican community, Bishop Gakumba. We have shared the vision and he said, I'm on board, next. Uh, here is Archbishop Odama of the Catholic Church of the North. He said this is providential. Here we're meeting with the leaders of the Baptist community and they said, yes, we're on board, we need this. Here is the leader, Father Julius of the Orthodox Church. He said, oh, we desperately need the family of God together, we're on board. Here are some of the Pentecostal leaders in the North and they are very excited and said, we are desperate, we are fighting amongst ourselves and we need unity. Here we are um, invited by the government of Uganda to what's called a cadre. Anybody that is elected or wants to be elected in a government or civil servant position has to go through this and they wanted us to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus. Now we're gonna camp on this picture for a little bit. Here in this picture you see the head of prisons, the mayor, the town clerk, the equivalent of what we would call the governor, the senator, the congress people, secret service intelligence. We met with them and we said, what would it be like if we came with the church leaders, the churches walking in true unity, and we come to your offices and say, how can we partner with you? Let's address the systemic issues. Let's work together in collaboration with the commanded blessing of God and the level of authority that happens when the churches come together. Together. And let's address the water, the, 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 the crime, the homelessness, the HIV AIDS, all those systemic issues. And they said, this is amazing. We are so excited and we will work with you. So God has given unprecedented yes. favor. So we see unity as foundational, not only for evan greater evangelism, but also to literally bring transformation to the region. And this next photo that uh, we want to show you here is of our advisory committee. And you can see who it's made up of. Pentecostal pastor, Anglican, a Catholic, an Orthodox, and a Baptist. In Christ Jesus, we are one. And these are the people that help guide us uh, through our decisions, because we're not Ugandans, and we need counselors, people to guide us and direct us, and, and they work closely yeah. with us there. Now, is so that the Unity Center? No, that's not. That was before the Unity Center was finished. And I think we're going to show a picture. I hope you have a picture of the Unity Center. Do you? We will see glimpses oh. during our first Friday Fellowship dinner photos. But what we're doing <laughs> okay. is we're moving from stranger to friend and from friend to family. And believe it or not, the, when, when we say there's division in Uganda amongst the church tribe leaders, they themselves have said we were enemies. Not just wow. divided, but enemies. Followers of Jesus enemies with one another. Now, Jane, you're so, talking about the Unity Center. Yeah. We hold a gathering called the First Friday Fellowship Dinner, and we have about 150, 160 church leaders from different denominations and elected and appointed leaders of the community coming together. Now, are so, these the activities that you're doing with Yes, the these are yes. one of the activities. One of the activities, of course, we're, we're open Monday th through Saturday. We're closed on Sunday because we're not going to be a church, mm -hmm. and we let them know that we're common ground. Mm -hmm. If we started a church, some dividing walls would go up. We need to be common ground at so, World Embrace. So First Friday Fellowship Dinner, it's named that because it's the first Friday of every month. So nobody has to remember the date. It's the first Friday <laughs> and it's a fellowship dinner. Remember, we're moving from stranger to friend, friend to family. And so yes. the first step is to connect. And we need to have fun together. We need to get to know one another, not just sit in a service and, and not really connect. Yes. Yep. Because relationship is key in unity. And so maybe we'll take a, a look at some of the yeah, pictures. Yeah. So here is, we set up some tents, keep going, yeah. and here are just lots of wow. pictures. These are leaders coming together for the first time for the first time mm. and, and they're connect smile. and we put on a big meal with food and they're moving from stranger to friend. They're getting to know one another. They're actually starting to exchange email addresses or phone numbers. You see them shaking as we play games together. We yeah. have fun, right? 
And so this is one of the strategies, one of the ministry activities that God has led us to in World Embrace. And so uh, we have unity summits as well to kind of sound out the call, and, but we have these First Friday Fellowship dinners as well. Yeah, so God is using this because we'll never have unity without relationship. Mm -hmm. And unity or relationships move forward at the speed of trust as yes. well, right? We need to build that. And a lot of times these Christian leaders and appointed leaders, when they meet, are at big stuffy functions, right? They're all on the best behavior, trying to look the very best. But what we're trying to do is build bridges of relationship and dismantle the man-made yes, walls yes. so that we can begin to discover one another. And it's, and it's harder to put down your brother or sister when you know them and they're your yeah. friend. <laughs> it's easier at a distance, right? right? And so we're seeing this beautiful unity coming about through the Unity Center. We need to, would you, here's the miracle. Here's the miracle video that Reynolds was referring to earlier, right? Are we at that point? Yeah, we, need oh, to we can certainly jump You've to that. You've got a video oh, for us. Or, or what did I miss? No, that's we, okay. Okay. Yeah. We were going to share about the As One Life Study. Okay, oh. put up the slide quick. As One <laughs> Life Study. This is something that God has called us to do to um, really bring together a life study so that Biblically based, we can move forward with that. Uh, and if we have that one slide. Yeah, well, what we need to say is not only are we connecting, but we're cultivating this connection, right? This needs to be cultivated and grow roots that will last and bear good fruit. And so God has led us to write a, uh, a, a biblical uh, life study, a curriculum, a discipleship course on unity. And so we gather these leaders in small groups at a time, 12 at a time, and their spouses if they're married. The Catholic priests aren't married, so obviously they don't have a spouse. <laughs> but we, we do life together yeah. around the Word of God as well. And so this is also one of the ministry activities of World Embrace. Yeah. But let's go to the miracle video. I talked about it off the top. And we're so excited to share this because um, R r really, it's wonderful. Yes, we can come on and we can share and we can tell what God's doing and God's doing this and that and you're gracious enough and you believe us, but it's nothing like hearing from the people you're <laughs> ministering to that they're actually capturing it and embracing this message. And the message that we have is God's message. So may this be an encouragement to you as you see these different leaders sharing their heart, talking about how yes. the way things used to be mm -hmm. and what God is doing in their lives now. And what we're believing, Bob and Jane, is that as we chronicle this, this movement, this unity, what does unity look like? How does it impact the society? What is this commanded blessing? That it's going to create a holy jealousy in the hearts of us here in North America to say, we need to have unity like that in our community yes. and let's see what we God's going to do. We need to have Amen. unity in our community. Yes. Yeah. yes. So may this video, video be an encouragement to you. During those days, before Wild Embrace came in Gulu, there was a lot of division among the Christians. Christians from different backgrounds were looking at each other as enemies. In Wild Embrace Unity Center, we sit together, we talk together, we, we interact, we build relationship, which is quite unique. The thought that was on my mind was, how is this going to be possible? You know, the Word of God says the house divided against itself cannot stand. Where two or three are gathered, in my name, I am there. So we feel the presence of God. World Embrace Unity Center has become that place of connection. It has transformed so many lives, positively. Like in World Embrace, I, what pleased me was people become friends. And not only as a friend, but also as a family. From stranger to friend, and from friends to family members, we don't feel strangers at all. We are just at home. It's very rare for a pastor to sit together with the priest. Very rare. They are making us even to have room for us to reconcile. And I believe my Father in heaven, God is happy because of that. We can agree on the things that matter the most. Unity is not uniformity. Christ is not coming for a denomination. He's not coming for a particular sect. He's coming for his, his body. What I have learned now is not to put ahead my, my, my denomination as a Catholic, but my faith as a Christian. Unity brings glory to Christ. I began to see people in respect to the cross, not uh, in respect to our churches. 
the more you focus your attention on thinking that you are the one who is right and all the others are wrong, you are actually making what you believe in unattractive for the other people. What we held for so long as the most important thing of the faith, which is our denomination, is actually not so important. Salvation is in Christ Jesus alone. Not in the name of the church, not in the place of the church, not even the structure of the building, but in Christ and Christ alone. World Embrace Center is almost like our father's house. As Anglicans, we can do some things, but without the others working together with us, we can achieve very little. As the body of Christ are united, many non-believers, they will join the church. And it's not by making noise or by praying that the world will know that he is Lord but if we have love one for another. Because they are brought unity, they are brought love, and love that has transformed our lives. And through that love, we can experience the living God in our midst. We no longer see one another as you know, enemies, as we used to do before, because world embrace has opened our eyes. In a unique way, it it places the believers in a place that the world can see. And in seeing the unity that the believers have, uh, those who don't know him are drawn to the body of Christ. And unity is something worth supporting because it is on the heart and the mind of Christ. This is what he said, this is my commandment that you love one another. When the church is one, when all the believers have one mind, that mind of Christ, I believe they can transform our society. Transform our society. Yes. And that's all we're looking for. Mm -hmm. yes. A society all worshiping the one, the true, the living God. Amen. Amen. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on earth yes. as it is in heaven. And in heaven, there uni there's unity. Mm -hmm. And God wants unity here to flow by His Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, they were, you saw ministers from different denominations, and sometimes we might already have man-made walls. We might not know why we feel uneasy, or maybe we were taught that in our gatherings. But you know what? We're going to dwell throughout eternity, like we have Heaven's Rehearsal, but throughout eternity with people that believe Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The Scripture says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. Yes. You will be saved. Even the criminal that was hanging be, be on the cross beside Jesus, he was the first to enter heaven under the new covenant in Jesus' blood. Amen. And he believed that Jesus was the Son of God. That's all Amen. he had to do. He didn't go to Sunday school. He didn't get he all didn't his P's and Q's in order That's and right. then dot every I, cross every T. Uh, his theology probably wasn't very good yet he believed in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Heaven will be populated with people, even children with a simple faith. Yes. And we need to recognize others within the body of Christ as part of the body of Christ and let our unity not be our styles and our preferences. Let our unity not be our denomination. Let our unity be in the head of the church, in the head of the body, which is Christ Jesus that does bring us as one and unifies us. Amen. And now, Tony LeBron is going to sing for us again. And I'm not sure what he's singing, but, but it'll be good. he's oh, a worshiper. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> There are so many different ways to watch the CTN family of networks. We're available on television almost anywhere. Direct TV, Dish Network, Glory Star. We even have a CTN Roku channel. If you live near any of these cities, you can watch us with an indoor outdoor antenna or through your local cable company. Best of all, you can watch CTN anywhere at any time by going to the internet. We're streaming online. Watch your desktop, laptop, tablet, iPad, your phone, or even your watch. Most of our shows are also available on demand. 
Watch what you want, when you want at ctnonline.com. CTN's family of networks. Take us with you and watch wherever you go. Scripture says, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And today, we're walking in his life and that life that he gives us more abundantly, moving forward, leaving the past behind, following him every step of the way. I'm here to declare to you, my past is over in you, all things are made new, surrendered my life to Christ, I'm moving, moving forward.
We've been talking with Kathy and Reynolds Maines, and they're not going back. <laughs> they're going forward. Amen. That's right. Well, what is God's expanded vision for you, right where he's put you? Well, Jane, not only are we going to continue to do the First Friday Fellowship Dinners and the As One Life Study, where we'll be discipling these leaders so that it cultivates the connection, and not only will we be collaborating with the government leaders to bring transformation in a holistic way, but there is a, an, a screaming, urgent need in the nation of Uganda right now that we believe that God is going to use the churches in unity to address and meet. 50%, that's 5-0, 50% of the population, population are age 15 and younger. Mm. There's children everywhere. And the caregivers, the mothers and the grandmothers are so concerned about survival, they don't have a lot of time with their children investing. In, they're, they're just all over the community, the teenagers, the young adults. And we're in a community of over 200,000 people. There's nothing for them. There's no gathering place. For the older ones, the teenagers and the young adults, there's bars, there's sports betting, and there's hanging out, and there's criminal activity. We have a great opportunity, we believe, to have a citywide unified ministry. Call it the Champion Center. Yes. And in fact, we want to show you some visuals. This is from Google Map, courtesy of Google Map, zooming in <laughs> on our town. You can see in the middle as we zoom in, there's an open space there. Just go ahead and zoom in a little bit more. And a little bit more, you see that open space the right in the center patch. of town. Keep going in. This is called uh, the Kuunda Grounds. And we're believing that God's going to give us, and just stay right there, a portion of land, if not here, somewhere else, but the size of three football fields. On one of them will be a soccer field, a full size, and that is a blessing. They love soccer. On, on the next one, you'll see we're, we're going to have a playground for the children, some tennis courts, some volleyball. And last, you can see a Jesus tent in the top right there where we're believing we'll be able to gather together thousands of children and young people and share the love of Christ Jesus in a unified manner where they will see the church as one. And the district will see the church working together as one. What a miracle. Yeah. Mm. The country will begin to see what it looks like when the church comes together as one and ministers to the children. Mm -hmm. We'll be closed on Sundays. As I said, we're not going to be a church. We're common ground where these churches, these denominations will join arms together and minister to that great need of these children. And why this is so important as well is, as we told you, we are in a hot zone where Islam in the north of Africa is pressing down and they are united and they are focused and they want to capture that generation. And, and you think of it, 50% of the population are 15 and younger. So if the churches can reach and redeem a whole generation, it literally will predict the future of this nation because they are the upcoming leaders. And Islam is not a little stronghold or demon. It That's is a problem. principality yep. and it sure. will not be addressed by one church. It has to be the churches walking, because there's power, Jane. We talked about yeah. this before the program. There's power in unity, and so yeah, it and, is vital. And their strategy is every five miles to build a mosque. And it, everyone has to pay for education, but they're saying, if you join our mosque, we, we will educate you for free and help you. And we're losing ground with the children there, mm -hmm. but we believe we'll gain ground. It's not only important to be one, but we're to move as one and be seen mm -hmm. as one. In our communities here in North America, in Africa, around the world, the body of Christ needs to come together, allow His Holy Spirit to move through and show His love to the world. Well, it takes finances for this, doesn't it? Yes, yes it yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's a vision. We believe God we're for casting that. casting vision. And uh, yeah, Jehovah pray Jehovah. for us, pray for us. Yes. Thank you. Well, we're going to have you back, that's for yeah. sure. And if God uh, lays it on your heart to be a part of this, mm. please feel free. You know, can we put that yes. address back sure. up there one more time, just real quick? Mm hmm. World Vision. World Embrace. I'm sorry, World Embrace. Yeah, World Embrace. Yeah. Uh, that's our name, Reynolds and Kathy. That's yeah. our website. Visit us. That's our address. God bless you, folks. Thank you, Thank Jesus. You. Thank, Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Oh, we love you, and yeah. God, God bless, bless you all. Love you all. <laughs> it's going to work.